Age of Empires 2 is about empire building, combat and conquest. You start from humble beginnings, a small village in the Dark Ages. You explore to expand your borders, conduct trade to boost your economy, and research technologies to grow your civilization into a mighty empire. But there are difficulties too. Cunning enemies and rivals that oppose you, powerful castles to destroy, tyrants to bring down. And if you're skillful and a little lucky, you just might build a wonder of the world and create an empire that will stand the test of time. To learn how empires are built, help our first hero, William Wallace, in his fight against his oppressors. We are without a leader. The dead king of Scotland has no heir. War creeps in from the south, where Edward Longshanks, the avaricious king of England, has returned from successful campaigns to conquer Wales and France. As Longshanks turns his attention to Scotland, the shadow of fear settles across the highlands. The English have thousands of Welsh longbowmen, hundreds of knights on horseback, and dozens of siege weapons. We Scottish have a rabble of untrained soldiers who do not even know how to march in a straight line. Well, we must act soon if we have any chance of resistance. We need to forge an army by any means necessary. The English are terrorizing all of Scotland, and it's time for us to fight back. But if we're to defeat them, every one of us will need to learn how to march and fight. Follow the path to the blue flag. First, click the soldier. Good. Now, right click near the blue flag. Good. Now, move to the next flag. Click the soldier, then right click near the flag. Excellent. To move to the next flag, you must walk through the black area. Moving into the black area reveals more than a map. The black area represents unexplored territory. That's all there is to it. Now, go on to the next flag where you'll meet some allied soldiers. To move all your soldiers at once. Click near the units and drag it on there. Then, right click to move. Drag your soldiers to the next flag. Did all your units make it to the flag? The road ahead is guarded by English outposts. Scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen. Then click to the outpost. Right click the outpost to attack it. The outpost is destroyed. That should slow the English raids. Keep following the path to the village. Come sweet home. Great. The English are angry that you destroyed their outpost. They're coming to attack your village. Don't panic. Just click your soldiers and right click the English soldiers to attack. Defeat the enemy soldiers and you will have won your first battle. Scotland has soldiers now, if only a few. But if we are to turn back the greed of Edward Longshanks, we will need many more recruits. Much more gold in our coffers. These ancient stones and oaks around us will soon be steeped in the blood of clansmen. An army marches on its stomach, or so the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years, but gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without a strong economy, the meager forces that we've cobbled together will collapse again. To support the Scottish army, you'll need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. To gather food from the forage bush, click a villager. Then right-click the forage bush near the blue flag. In the status area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he's carrying 10 food. 
I'll continue working for you. Carry on the food to the town center. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold, and stone stockpiles. The more villagers you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. Good! You found some gold! To win, also gather 50 wood and 50 gold. Before we gather a wood, take a villager, then right click a tree. Edward Longshanks, for all his disrepute, has shown military tactics in Wales, England, and France to be very effective. If not cruel and ruthless, he's indeed an enemy to be feared. The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. Would that I could call it a battle, but it was truly more of a massacre. Unless we organize our army, there will be more massacres to follow. I pray we can be ready for Long Shanks coming. In villages throughout the Highlands, there is grim talk of skirmishes between Scotland and England. We lost the city of Dunbar this week. Scottish defenders broke ranks and fled. The English have an army that is larger and better trained. To compete with them, we are going to need new recruits to pick up the spear, sword, or bow. We must remake these shepherds into soldiers. We will need many soldiers to defend our homeland. We'll start by creating villagers. Click your town center, then click the Create Villager button in the lower left corner of the screen. It takes time for a villager to appear. If your town center is selected, you can see the progress in the status area at the bottom of your screen. Good job! The villager has appeared next to your town center. Now, create another village. You need additional housing to support your population. To build a house, click the villager. Click the buildings button, click the build house button, then click where you want to build the house. Now it's complete. Now you can create soldiers. Click the village, then click the create militia button. Selecting different buildings or units gives you different options in the lower level. Good job! Try building another house. If more than one villager builds a building, it will go up faster. Each house supports five units. The population indicator at the top of the screen shows your current supportable air population. Other buildings are made just like houses. Try building a barracks. The barracks is a military building. That's one militia. Create three more, and you'll have enough soldiers to protect this area and win the scenario. Click the barracks, and quickly click the Create Militia button three more times to make three soldiers in a row. Now that we have militias stationed across the border, the English have slowed their raids. But facing Longshank's army will be another matter. The wicked English king has yet to bring his famous longbows to bear. Our militias could only get us so far. We are going to need more advanced weapons. Rumors creep in from the south of a giant who leads the forces of Scotland, his great sword driving through earth and man and horse alike. If this mythical knight can hold the English advance, it will give us time to develop the arms we need. Even now our smiths are forging swords and fletchers are making arrows and crossbow bolts. The English use very advanced weapons and armor. To win, you will need to advance to the feudal age and repel the English raids. You're going to need to research some technologies of your own to increase the strength of your civilization. For example, researching loom makes your villagers hard with your To research loom, click the town center, then click the research loom button. Good. Researching technology costs resources, but improves your civilization. While you're researching, you can put your villagers to work and use your military units to explore. Toe, 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 
New technologies and things become available when you advance to a new age. To advance from the dark age to the feudal age, you need 500 food. Now you have enough food to advance to the feudal age. However, you also need two buildings from your current age. You already have a barracks. So now have your villagers build a mill. The mill is a drop-off point for food, so build it next to your food source. Good. You're on your way to the feudal age. Worms! English are making a sneak attack! has invaded, stormed, and sacked the city of Perth. It's worse. He's captured the fabled Stone of Scone and declared himself King of Scotland. If we cannot bring about a victory in battle soon, then the Scottish armies will be too demoralized to put up any fight at all. If this mythical Scottish giant does exist, I wish he'd get his forces up to Stirling, where we shall next do battle. Time for minor skirmishes is over. We now prepare for war. The villain Longshanks is poised to cross the river forth and threaten the town of Stirling with a force of men-at-arms, heavy cavalry, and a multitude of archers. Our newly formed army marches southward to establish our own base and attack the English before they can ready their troops.
Sterling was our first great victory. Even as we held the coastline, word came in that the Sterling Bridge had been held by a force of Scots led by the mythical knight of whom so many have spoken. Now we know his name. Sir William Wallace, the Hammer of the English. Edward Longshank's name's Wallace a traitor and a criminal. But Sir William replies that he cannot be a traitor since he never swore fealty to an English king. With Wallace leading our armies, the men fight with renewed vigor. Perhaps the tide of our misfortunes is about to turn. <laughs> <laughs> 